Does a pastor need a good bedside manner like a good physician? And if he does, where does he get some skill like that? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. Um, this is kind of, this kind of is a, is an important point for me. It really reminds me of your dad, you know, and, and he always seemed pretty rare, even for a physician, um, acutely aware of everybody's issues, even before they were talking about them and trying to step in and self-sacrifice and make sure that they were going to be okay. But he would head off the, 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 uh, the hardship for them, or he would help alleviate that. And it seems like uh, we are in, living in a, um, in a uh, culture of technicians. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I once said that uh, there was a dentist we had that I thought should be working, it seemed like he should be better suited to be working on BMWs than on people. Mm-hmm. Very common. <clears throat> um, in theory, that should be developed during seminary training. Um, even in our circles, not so much. The cognitive, uh, the training of the doctrine and the responses, biblical responses to questions from parishioners is important. I, far be it from me to downplay that, but it's not the same presence as of a healer. It's sort of like the philosophers talk about when they say a necessary condition but not sufficient. <clears throat> um, if we don't develop it at seminary, and we don't, uh, we're thrown back onto I think, our fathers. And I happen to have a father, medical, who was like that. I would assume he got it from his father, but I would have been wrong. Uh, Paul Fairweather said, there was some guy whose name you don't know who picked your dad up either during college years or medical school years and provided what he needed and didn't get from his dad. So... Uh, my wish is that that we would develop that at seminary. I, I mentioned to you earlier, when I was at the Missouri Springfield, Illinois Seminary, every prof spoke to us every hour as a dying man to dying men. Uh, we don't have that that I know of anymore. And we all we all need this. This is why it's just so critical. Um, bringing bringing. Uh, like let me I'll use let me use an example. We always like the show House, right? <clears throat> there was still something likable about that guy, even though he was just a massive jerk. <laughs> something about him, and there was some way that it, and he was an addict, right? But but there was a but there was something about him where even though he was a class A one jerk, right? <laughs> he somehow was on your side yeah. at the end of the day, and you could see him tapping into this thing for a reason that he seemed to want to kind of keep hidden. But at least you, f I mean, it just yes. came across like mm -hmm. you knew he was stoic and he was going to stand there like a statue, but you still wanted to hug him because he rescued you. Yep. <clears throat> and I think that's about as good as you, you know, or, you know, that's as about as on the, that's the lower end of the, of the good side, yep. you know, but there, there are people that treat this, um, by the numbers, they just, yeah. you know, and you see that sometimes even with pastors who don't even show, Yeah, they don't have time for you. That's one of the, one of the big ones I yeah, see yeah. is, is they just aren't even there. If you're in the hospital or, uh, or even a family members in the hospital, the pastors don't make, you know, too many pastors don't make house trips anymore. Now we know a lot who do. Um, and, uh, but I don't, I think this is across the board. I don't hold this to anyone. Yeah. There's a large group of non-Roman Christians in America and they really don't have a pastor. They have somebody who speaks on Sunday morning and then they try to get two minutes with him as they're leaving. But that's about it. Uh, that's deprived. I remember you speaking once, this isn't necessarily directly related, but I remember you speaking once about um, a pastor uh, or a church uh, where a friend of ours goes up in Santa Barbara. And you said, uh, you had the throwaway comment that one of the, one of the great things about that is it was that it was a church filled with older people. 
And uh, if you've got a pastor who's doing his job there, then the good news is, is that uh, because everybody there is pretty much on the way out, if the pastor's doing his job, you're getting the gospel every week. Yep. Yep. And they all need to hear it because God knows when they're going to be gone. Yep. Yeah, to be close to the threshold of leaving uh, gives a certain uh, encouragement to listen. And you hope that the guy is delivering the goods because your days are numbered and you know it. Uh, That's an incentive to listen. But isn't that also then good news to me? Because in reality, I don't know when I'm going to go either. That's right. If I have a heart attack or a stroke or or an aneurysm or I'm in a car accident or any other number of things. We know not the the length of our days, any one of us. One drunk driver on the other side and if you're planning to get baptized just before you die, the drunk driver will cut that short. None of us have assurances. Or God forbid, we keep living and one of our kids is gone. Sure. You know, that's the real horror show. Sure. You know, from my perspective, and I think most parents would feel this way, you know, as much as I don't want my kids to be deprived of a parent, in a certain sense, I'd much rather not have to uh, go through that experience. Absolutely. But, but, what, but the thing that helps me go through all the hard all the hard things in life like that, whether it's that dark or just small things, is that there's a pastor who's been through it, yep. gets it, and sits at your bedside as somebody who understands. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> how do you have a seminary classroom where the course title is empathy? You don't. Boy, that would be a valuable one. Who could teach it? I mean, I, that's really just like a, a class. It's really a class where the... Come in here, and the teacher is going to be a father to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we get that from uh, from uh, these these like you said about your dad. You know, we get it from these people, whether it's actually the father or like you have done for so many men. You know, you get these surrogates who stand in and do this thing, and all of a sudden, young men are lifted up out of their nightmare, or women too, lifted out of their nightmares uh, that they when they didn't get it from their childhood, and of course. That's kind of what we're delivering here also. Yeah, and the gospel, if preached or preached well, tells the story of the father who gave up his own son for our sakes. Uh, No obligation on his part, whatever. It's the great story. And if the pastor is doing that preaching the gospel not just to unbelievers, but to every believer who is there, we can coattail on that, any one of us, uh, that the Father gave up his only son to death, a horrible death, and all for our sake. The good news is, is too absent. We're trying to get it back there. Uh, we're going to be cutting this off. Really hope you're getting this in church. Really hope that you know somebody somewhere who's able to do this for you. And I know um, we keep continue as our as our uh, exposure at fifteen seventeen grows. You know we continue to to hear stories about people who are suffering, and uh, we're we're really hoping that the messages that we bring you here uh, through this and our other means um, at least give you a sense of the sound of what it should be like. And uh, we hope that we really would like to see this sort of thing return in a great wave in the Christian church. So um, we, get to, we get to be on this ride along with you. So hope this is useful to you. Catch you next time. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. Mm